Hello, hope you're doing good. Thanks for joining. And uh, this will be the second part of our The Beginner's Guide for Windows Server Active Directory. So let us see what we have covered in part number one. So we have understood the basic functionality of Active Directory as a service. We have understood the basic architecture of Windows NT, which was the before Active Directory. And we have also gone through the business world before Active Directory. Now in this session, the part two, we'll take a look at what exactly is a directory service. And we'll also look at the characteristics of a typical directory services. And we'll look at the architecture of Microsoft's Active Directory as a directory service. So let's get started. So what exactly is a directory service? So first of all, a directory service is a database. So database of what? So this database maintains information about users and resources on our network. Directory services are often say referred to as directories some people call it as user stores say identity stores or even LDAP directory so there are various names so they store information such as users say usernames passwords user user preferences information about devices and much more So network and system administrators use directory services to onboard users, manage access privileges and monitor and control access to applications and infrastructure resources. So these are the basic usage of Active Directory. Let's take an example over here. Let's say when a user accesses an application. So that application refers the directory services to ensure the user is a legitimate user okay before granting the user the access to the application so everything is say referenced against active directory for any kind of say privilege or say access related uh, authentication and authorization related issues So directory services are fundamental elements of any identity security strategy. Man. So no identity and uh, say identity and uh, access related strategy can be worked out without any kind of directory service. See many identity and access management solutions use directory services in conjunction with single sign on and multi-factor authentication or even say life cycle management functionality of a particular identity identity can be a user a computer an application can be anything so uh, let us look at the characteristics of uh, a typical directory services so all the directory services are hierarchical in their naming model and they have extended search capabilities and the information is distributed means they have the distributed information model they don't sit on a single computer it's absolutely distributed and of course we have shared network access and the data is replicated and data data store optimizes the the entire data store is optimized for read purpose and last but not the least uh, we have extensible schema so we will be discussing all these points in our upcoming sessions so let's take an example of some of the directory services which are present in the market today so we have LDAP lightweight directory access protocol then we have novel directory services and last but not the least we have microsoft's active directory as a directory services now let us look at the 
architecture of Microsoft's Active Directory as a directory service. So before that, uh, we must know the concept of a domain controller in the world of Active Directory. So in the world of Active Directory, any computer on which Active Directory database okay, is present can be called as a domain controller. So this is a, a definition in a layman's language. So let's say any server or a computer on which Active Directory domain services are installed and configured can be called as a domain controller, which is it's not a normal computer. So we have installed Active Directory domain services and I've configured it. So after configuring Active Directory domain services, the database is created and that's that's the reason this computer is called as a domain controller. So let us dive into the architecture of Active Directory. So as we know that every domain controller has a read write copy of Active Directory database in the world of Active Directory. It's not like Windows NT in the world of Windows NT only the primary domain controller has a read write copy of the database. But here in Active Directory, every domain controller will have read write copy of Active Directory database. So as a result, as an administrator, we can make changes on any domain controller. So a change can be, let's say a creation, deletion, modification of movement of an object can be called as a change. So we can make changes on any domain controller because every domain controller has a read write copy of Active Directory database. And these changes will be automatically replicated on all the domain controllers in your domain. So if you make change on any one domain controller that will be replicated to all the domain controllers in the entire Active Directory domain. So let's understand the summary what we have learned up till now with the architecture. Say there is no master slave architecture like Windows NT as every domain controller has a read write copy of Active Directory database then we as a human human beings system administrators can make changes on any domain controller because every domain controller has a read write copy of active directory database then these changes are automatically replicated to all the domain controllers in the active directory domain and say saying this we can say that all the domain controllers are peers of each other there's no master slave or a single master architecture. Every domain controller is on the same level. They are peers of one another. So this was part number two. Hope you have enjoyed today's session. And if you, if you think this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Flies home for the winter